Hello, I'm Henry Bonsu and this is Doubling Down, a new show in which we delve into a topic that's blazing a trail on social media and beyond. Joining me today are writer and commentator Lola Adeshoi, the author and blogger Richard Phillips, and the political commentator Ella Whelan. Welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for coming in. Now, they're truly great works of art that tell the story of ancient cultures. But to see them, you'll have to go to grand European institutions, like the British Museum, the Musée du Louvre in Paris, or Berlin's Neues Museum. Campaigners have long demanded the repatriation of such treasures as the Benin Bronzes, Iraq's Ishtar Gate, and the Egyptian bust of Queen Nefertiti. But these museums claim they represent world heritage and are much safer in rich European capitals than back in their original, often unstable homes. Britain even says this to the Greeks, the Greeks, about their famous Elgin marbles. Now activists have been inspired by France's President Macron, who has commissioned a review into treasure stolen by France when it colonized much of Africa. The debate has been reignited in Britain too, with a new exhibition of royal treasures raided from Ethiopia. But while the Victoria and Albert Museum says it's prepared to loan them to Addis Ababa, it cannot give them back permanently. So we're asking, should works of art be returned to the culture that produced them, or are they better left in Europe, where they've been given pleasure to millions from all over the world? So panel, there are many, many different angles on this. There's a personal, political, cultural, colonial, maybe even spiritual. I'm going to start off with you, Lola. Um, you're a Nigerian Brit. When you go to the British Museum, I know you like to go there, and you look at the Benin bronzes in the Africa galleries, been there for a long time, uh, looted from Benin City by the Brits in 1897. What do you think when you look at them? Do you feel offended? Do you feel kind of enchanted? What? No, I'm, I'm offended. I'm offended by the fact that they are there. They shouldn't be there. They were stolen and they should be returned to their original homes. But the Brits say they hold these in trust for the world. And people from all over the world come to the British Museum, millions of people uh, every year, and they can appreciate African art right there in London. But the British were not given, you know, they, were, they didn't get consent for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. It's not like Benin said, oh, please hold on to these for us and we'll come and collect them in a few years' time or you can hold them in perpetuity. So realistically, it's private property mm -hmm. and they should be returned. I don't think there's any good reason why Britain should hold on to them. Yes, I understand that they could say, well, if there's nowhere in Benin that can keep them for now, yeah. fine, then we'll set up a time when we can say there'll be a handover. Mm -hmm. But I think morally it's wrong to keep them. I think that it's people need to be able to see the cultural artifacts from their own cultures. And the problem is that Europe took a lot out of Africa and um, have since said that Africans haven't really contributed anything to culture while holding our cultural artifacts in, in Europe. Okay, uh, let's move on to you, Richard. You're a, you're a cultivated man, a man for all seasons. Some might even say a Renaissance man. Uh, when you go to, <laughs> he's not accepting that, to the British Museum and you see, say, the Rosetta Stone, it's mm. amazing, amazing Egyptian artwork. Mm. Um, what, what do you think? Are, are you troubled that it's not its original context? No. Um, first of all, <laughs> okay. I'm not actually the least bit troubled by it. I mean, I'm going to be completely honest about it. I don't... I. I wonder if museums at all honestly are necessary in 2018 um, why wouldn't they be because I think we can because they were because we can film the stories that they that museums tell we can see it all in much more interestingly than usually they can get presented in museums we haven't got to read little you know uh, bits of type that you can't you, well, know, you don't have to read or, or walk around or, or walk around with headsets on I mean they can be present, presented much more dramatically and we can see them in situ. So I really, I mean, generally, I, I, I wonder what the point of museums in lots of ways are now. Yeah. They, they, you know, at the beginning, when, you know, when they were started and they were before the idea that we could actually, like zoos, yeah. you know, what, why do we need them? Um, apart from to let, you know, single parents have somewhere to take their children <laughs> on right, Sunday well, afternoons. I mean, what's the point of them uh, apart from that? Ella, I'm not sure if that's the line you're going to take. We're going to move you um, to the Greek section, classical Greek section, uh, the Parthenon marbles, the Elgin marbles. When you look at them, do you not think they'd be better off in their original context, in the Acropolis in Athens? Uh, not necessarily, because I think the I'm going to really defend museums. I Ooh. think the the power well, look at him. <laughs> of something like the British Museum is that you get um, 
you do get a different kind of context. You get to move from the different areas that you've just described, look at the culture of that time in relationship to cultures of a different time. It's, you know, you cannot underestimate the power of standing in front of a piece of art. Not, re not reading the blurb, not doing anything like that, just standing there and looking at it and being, you know, completely enchanted by it. I think museums are very important for well, that. You and have the, the privilege reason of doing this as somebody in the UK, the person who's a descendant possibly of the people who made those original exactly. artifacts in Benin or in Addis Ababa. They can't see it, they can't even get a visa to come exactly. to London. Well, yeah, but that's not that. So that is a discussion that can be had. That's not necessarily about where the art should be. And I think the problem with this discussion is that we're not talking about where best the art serves, where best the uh, art is stored necessarily, or where most people can see the art. I mean, there's a very strong argument for saying, as you said at the beginning, that um, the British Museum is visited by millions and millions of people. It's, you know, it's free to access. Mm -hmm. And if you can get to London, you can go and see it. But uh, if we want to talk about what is happening politically in this <clears throat> in this argument, it's really, I think, an abuse of what art means. You talked about art as private property. Mm -hmm. That immediately makes me go, oh, no, it's yeah. probably, you know, there's that argument to it. We need to separate the discussion about what is best for the art, where it best is valued, and this political discussion about Okay, and Lola wants to get back in, and you will get the chance to do so. Yes. Just hold that thought for a second, because we want to broaden this out. You guys have been getting in early on our Facebook page, and here's a flavour of what you've been saying. We'll start off with this from Michael, who says, how about a deal? Benin can have their statue provided they give back all the foreign aid money they took, <laughs> including the five million uh, pounds for fighting Boko Haram. Hmm. And, and this one from John Lazaridis, who says, I have personally lost hope, every hope, that the Elgin marbles will ever see Athens again. It's like smuggling something like the Excalibur out of England, except the Elgin marbles are real and older. Hmm. You too can join in the debate on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram by using the handle doubling down TV and my panel and I will do our best to uh, respond. Um, you wanted to get back in there Lola, yeah. very quickly. When Nazis looted artifacts from Jewish people afterwards and, and to this day the the job has been to put that stuff back with the people that it comes from um, and provenance is a very very important part of art history and if you buy something whether it's a work of art or something from a museum um, or an art, or somebody tries to sell an artifact, they have to find out where it came from mm. and how it was obtained. And that is a very important part of this, dis uh, this conversation. If things were stolen, then I think, you know, it's completely right that they should be put back. I don't even understand why that is, a, quickly. is a disagreement. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a difference, I think, between uh, you don't have to condone the evils of the past to understand that there's a difference between understanding the past, judging it, and then trying to rewrite history, which I think the repatriation argument is in danger of doing. It's in danger of pretending that this stuff didn't happen. Most art was has either, by the time it leaves the creator's so hands, most or art is dodgy. sold or stolen. I mean, the history of where the art, what has happened to the art, is also important. We shouldn't try to whitewash that. In Richard, fact. I was just thinking about this point about who owns it. I mean, or. It was stuff being stolen. As my understanding of the Elgin marbles is the fact that when they were taken from uh, Greece in whenever, you know, um, they were 18, was it? Late, late 18th century, late 19th century. Yeah, late 19th. Uh, they were actually, it was actually part of the Ottoman Empire and the Sultan gave permission for them to be taken. They weren't stolen. The people who theoretically were in control of the country. What, at did the time, Sultan have the right? Well, to sell they'd been, to a, you know, at that point, Greece had been part of the Ottoman Empire for 400 years, which is a long time. I mean, it wasn't Greece as we know it in the modern sense. OK, well, you, Richard, you may not be troubled by this, but none other than President Macron himself of France is uh, concerned about this. Uh, and he says uh, this uh, in that famous speech in Burkina Faso last November. I cannot accept that a large share of several African countries' cultural heritage be kept in France. There are historical explanations for it, as you were saying, Ella, uh, but there is no valid, lasting and unconditional justification. African heritage cannot solely exist in private collections and European museums. African heritage must be showcased in Paris, but also in Dakar, Lagos and Cotonou, 
this will be one of my priorities. And uh, I suppose put a bit of a muscle behind it by commissioning two experts to examine how this repatriation might be done. They're the Senegalese economist Elwin Sarr and the French art historian Professor Benedict Savoy, and they're going to report back to him later this year in November. Now, it's interesting to remember this, uh, given what you were saying, Lola. Professor Savoy resigned in spectacular fashion from Germany's Humboldt Museum last July because she was worried about where many of the African artifacts had come from. And I'm going to quote from her directly. She said, I want to know how much blood is dripping from each artwork. Hmm. Well, if that's how she feels, it promises to be a pretty powerful review. We haven't got time to wait for it, though, so we've lined up our own expert. Dudu Sa is a Senegalese arts consultant, and earlier I spoke to him from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, and asked him what he made of the prospect of African treasures finally coming home. Well, we, which we're talking about is a very dear issue to most self-respecting Africans, or all Africans, I should say. Um, I mean, and, and my take on it is from a very simple premise. If Africa is not holding any cultural treasures of Europe or the Americas or any other continent, then nobody else under no circumstances should be holding um, our treasures. So from that simple premise, I think the repatriation, it's not even a debate, that should be automatically done. Now, how and where and when, yes, that, that deserves some sort of thinking. But on the issue of whether we should or we shouldn't, I think it's a non-issue. Um, non we shouldn't even be asking ourselves whether we, we should claim those things back. Dudu, you travel all over the continent, and you come from a country, Senegal, that really prizes what you would call les beaux-arts, the beautiful fine arts. You have a great institution yeah. called IFAN in mm -hmm. Dakar. Absolutely. But I mean, yeah. there aren't many like that across Africa. So how concerned mm -hmm. are you that objets d'art, beautiful treasures, will be returned to places where they're not appreciated, where people have other priorities, like clean, uh, water, like food, like freedom of assembly, freedom of expression before they go and see these treasured. Aren't they better off, some of them, in the Louvre, in the British Museum, in some of these other great institutions in Germany, say? Um, a resounding no, under no circumstances. I, I still stick to my um, standpoint on that. Yes, I, I can see some of the concerns that the professionals are, you know, stating. Yes, and um, I am not going to stand here and say there are some places where, of course, you know, it depends on which hands they end up um, that will determine the fate of those pieces, because those some, some people have been um, partakers in the illicit trade of those treasures. That is a fact. We know that, as well as, you know, the mismanagement of the countries and um, the wrongdoings that we know of some African leaders. Um, that is definitely the case, but Africa's changing. There are, there's a new breed, there's a new generation that's coming up and taking over, and among them, that's Felwin Sa, who you just mentioned. Um, and we do, we can do the job. We can, we can help, depending on who they send it over. Now, the mechanism of the repatriation is, I think, where the debate should be centered, and who to give those back to, whether it's government institutions or um, some sort of, you know, groups or associations of Africans who know how to do these things very well. I think that's where the conversation should be centered, rather than whether yes or no, we should, we should take them back and what fate should they have. I think their fate depend on who they hand them back to. Dudu Sa, the uh, art consultant, talking to me a little earlier. I'm going to go to you, uh, Ella. He said it's very, very clear the conversation should be focused on how these uh, objects, these treasures, which tell the story of a people, should be repatriated. You're not persuaded by the force of his argument? Um, well, no, because the, the same, I mean, the technical issue of the danger in moving art is one that shouldn't be snuffed at, and I'm mm -hmm. glad that he um, takes that seriously. But again, 
what was clear from what he said was that this isn't about the value of that art necessarily, it's about the political implications. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, you, you know, I know that I'm in danger of sounding like someone who's glorifying or supporting colonialism, that's absolutely not the case, yeah. but this discussion about claiming back culture and kind of, um, dare I say it, being greedy about it and link, linking it explicitly to a certain context, which yeah. is important, but I very much want to champion the argument. There's a great book called Keeping Their Marbles by Dr. Tiffany Jenkins, and mm -hmm. she talks about the argument that culture and art should cross borders, cross continents, and be a world culture. And right. that's very persuasive to me. Very persuasive. Lola, to you? It isn't persuasive to me because this is, it is a political discussion because it's part of the wider story of colonialism, imperialism, and stealing from other people. And this is something Europeans have done forever and it's irritating. In terms of Africa, they've stolen people, artifacts, treasures, resources. It's like, what more do you, know, what more do you want? At what point does Europe say, we've done enough, now we can give people back some of the things that they're actually owed. Richard? Well, I'm going to offer a, 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 you know, a compromise here. And is I there one? Yes, I think there is. This is my compromise. Yes. If people insist on these things are important, why not make perfect facsimiles, which I'm sure you could do today, <laughs> so that you wouldn't know the difference, send back the originals, yes. keep the facsimiles, and then, you know, you could, you could go around look, staring at whatever it happens to be and you'd have it back in yes, wherever it I was. Like that. What would be wrong with that? And, by the way, you could then pretend that you hadn't sent the originals back. You, could, <laughs> you know, they could claim they've got the originals and you could claim you've got the originals and never would be happy. I mean, I'm looking at Ella's yeah. face. Are you persuaded by a digital printout of these? No, why? No, why? No, can you explain to me? Because there is a certain... You mentioned spiritual at the start. There is I, a certain... Uh, I mean, did, there is a certain <laughs> thing that happens that I can't quite describe when you stand in front of a great piece the of original. art. Okay, the original. The original, which cannot be replicated and the importance of it cannot be understated. And I think this is the key thing. We're, we're in danger of taking these pieces of art and being informed by them only on the political basis, not as the standalone piece of art. All right, before, 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 how, before, how is it spiritual? Wait a minute, wait a minute. How before Richard and Lola get back how in. How is it no, spiritual? How is it spiritual? Well, I mean, out of body of experience when you've ex experienced so art. So how is it spiritual for people in Europe to stand and look at the, art, the artwork and artefacts from people from which that stuff was taken? And it's not spiritual, it's only political for the people from where it comes to say they want stuff back. So they too can have a and I suppose you, it's things. important to say you don't see I mean, many European treasures in museums in Lagos, in Addis Ababa or whatever. You don't but see any. We don't see any. OK. <laughs> yeah. let's, let, let's move on for a second because we've been asking you to get in touch through our various doubling down platforms. Getting hot in here. Uh, here's a taste of what you've been saying. My name's Nicola. I'm calling from Manchester. I would like to know if the panel agree with me in that instead of blaming Britain and the West, it's time we blamed some of the countries in Africa, Asia and the Middle East for their weakness in trying to recover some of their artefacts that they rightfully own. It's time for them to shout a little louder and, and put pressure on Britain and some of these great museums in Europe um, to give back what is rightfully theirs. My name is Richard John from London and in my opinion uh, Western powers including France absolutely need to give back these stolen artefacts they've looted from the countries they've colonized um, in the past and to be clear um, returning these items to their rightful owners uh, would be nothing less than one small step in the long road for justice that justice should be economic justice and social justice, in my opinion. Hello, my name's John from Leeds. Let's be honest, most of these countries are not capable of looking after precious artwork. Leave them where they are. Leave them where they are. Thank you very much, uh, John, uh, in Leeds and here in the UK. Um, Ella, <laughs> I was watching your face as we played those uh, uh, recordings that came in earlier today. Which one did you have most sympathy with? Well, th the last caller, probably, but specifically not because of this is just a technical argument about how best to keep the art, which is, you know, it's important, but I think the key thing here is one of the callers mentioned justice, yeah. the seeking of justice. We are 
in the middle of a kind of political debate at the moment about uh, repatriation, not just of art, but compensation, yeah. discussion about apologies. And that goes, it doesn't just, it's not just about this museum discussion. We're talking about ripping down statues, the Rhodes Moss 4 campaign. Yes. A rewriting of history, which does make anyone but who has any history respect constantly for, evolving anyway. Well, there's that, but there's a. I think there's a sort of um, semi-instrumental kind of desire to just sort of sticking plaster over history or rewrite it or force apologies when the worth of that is questionable. Mm -hmm. If you're, uh, I really think we're in danger of missing the point of art and but, the but, power but art of art. Carries, is replete with symbolism, uh, political as well as uh, purely <laughs> appreciation, purely aesthetic, Lola. Where, I mean, Ella, um, you know, where you're wrong is actually, it's not rewriting history. It's actually telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's a different thing. The history that people have in this country is not actual history. It's a rewritten history. But people so know the where this art came so from. But it, you, well, you are aware of the history of it, but it's... In you know, that what, case, what, what, what they should do to? is they could do, um, you know, some sort of replica and, and give the background to how these things ended up in the British Museum. And that, to me, is the interesting story. How did, the, how did they come to be there in the first place? A compromise, but not Richard's one. Well, can I just go on to something about, you know, the importance of the the original piece. Mm -hmm. How many pictures of, you know, Renaissance haven't been restored to the point that you vir virtually do not know who painted what? Mm -hmm. So the argument that that original piece is, you know, sacrosanct seems to me to be absurd. In 2018, we could reproduce virtually anything to the point that no nobody with a human eye could actually detect it from the original, mm -hmm. so why does it matter? It's not about, authentic, don't, I, it's about I, authenticity, I, I, isn't I, it? Well, credibility. Is it, 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 well, it? Well, is it? it, it why is, is authentic? You know, because it's only one original in the world well, of the Rosetta see, Stone. And if you have respect for that artwork, which we should do, you would acknowledge that authenticity is, is such an important thing. I mean, we can talk about the, the political prob problems with people not being able to access this art from different parts of the world, but really an argument for something like the British Museum, which gives you an encyclopedic view, yeah. which is, you know, you can go through the whole of art history in the space of an afternoon if you walk quickly and you know the experience of that sort so of it's about, unrivaled. So it's about the comprehensive experience. But uh, you can look, do all of minute, those things with facsimiles. Okay. <laughs> and a documentary. Okay. I'm going to shut down this argument <laughs> let, 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 argument let, let, with facsimiles. It's, it's getting good. chaotic in here. Well, let's find out what our, our, our viewers are, <laughs> are thinking, because as well as calling with your comments, you've been making your voices heard on Twitter. How about this uh, from Percy Shelley, who says, could not agree more. England can start by returning the stolen Elgin marbles, which they've installed backwards and inside out. One of the most beautiful galleries in the world waits them in Athens, the Acropolis Museum. Hashtag return the Elgin marbles. And uh, interestingly, that comment is backed by President Pavlopoulos of Greece, who said the return of the Parthenon marbles was his first priority. All right, let's kind of uh, get our closing thoughts on this. Lola. I mean, like um, Ella said, people are up in arms because it's been suggested that some statues should come down and Nelson should come down, but they're not up in arms about having other people's cultural artefacts in their museums and not wanting to return them. I find that fascinating. So you don't want your own things to come down, you don't want anyone to change or talk about your history, but you're okay to go and take other people's and deprive those people of seeing their original works in their origin in their homelands, I don't understand that at all. Well, Im imagine if there had been a battle in which the Ethiopians had taken the Lindisfarne Gospels and they were now in, um, let's say, Addis Ababa. Do you think the Brits would be right and justified in saying to the Ethiopians, "We want it back"? I mean, who can predict what that would be? This isn't a discussion about where they should, I think, rightfully sit, even though context, I completely agree with you that context is extremely important. I recently went to Pompeii and lots of the artefacts from there have been moved up the road to Naples and yeah. it's not a great experience because you're kind of going around thinking, well, where's that? There's I, I art, there's when waiting. We, I remember when we had the Stone of Schoon uh, down south in the south of England, so in London, mm -hmm. and in the end, 22 years ago, it was set back up to Scotland. Yeah, so there's it was a very big thing. There is weight in that argument, certainly, 
but you have to weigh that up with the argument, the political argument that's going on at the moment, which is soaked in a kind of the discussion about repatriation and the idea of seeking justice, which I think misses the point of what we're talking about in art. And those two things need to be separated: the political discussion and how best we value the art. And I think, but it's not all that political in the end. It came from the populace. It came from people, often who were commissioned by rulers, um, to demonstrate a person, a people's history. Um, history and culture go hand in hand. Well, I've got a couple of points here. First of all, history, I think I'm right in saying, Henry, you're the linguist here, mm -hmm. but it's from histoire, which yes. is story. <laughs> and history is just a story. Yeah. And there are many different histories. And to argue that one is authentic and another isn't seems to me to be absurd because we just get a receive you know, picture of what things have, things have been and how they're going to be interpreted at any given moment. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and uh, basically I, you know, I'm... Uh, you just called me a Philistine. Well, I'm very happy. I think the Philistines. Very friendly. Have, I think very the friendly. Philistines have had a bad rap. All right, Lola. Um, I think the most important discussion should be um, if the, if things are to be repatriated, how are we going to do that? And that's right. that's my um, interest. Right. Could have to finish there. Thank you very much, all of you. That was hot. And that's it for this week. Thanks very much to my studio guests, Lola Adeshoi, Richard Phillips, and Ella Whelan. Check out Doubling Down on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for news of next week's topic and to get your views in early. Till then, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.